Uh, so starting off with the video, I'm creating this video just as a recap or a reflection on the course that I took uh, for the summer school at the University of Metropolia. Uh, the course incorporated digital twins and a built-in environment. So digital twins, as I've got the definition on my screen right now, I, if I talk honestly, I really didn't have an idea as to what a digital twin might be. I mean, going by the definition or going by the set of words, I just thought it might be a virtual simulation of of some some sort of things that we have prior or like some sort of things that we have before. But coming into the course the first day, I realized or we discussed that digital twin is just not a set of simulation. It's a lot more than that. Digital twin you could create simulations based off of digital twins, but it's just not a simulation. So digital twin, as, as the definition says, is a set of adaptive models that emulate the behavior of a physical system in a virtual system, getting real-time data to update itself along its life cycle. So I, I don't think um, many people would be clear just off the definition. So diving deep into the definition, I'd say, a uh, digital twin is like a virtual copy of any object that may or may not be present in the real life. Digital twins just not simulate, but they help us in forecast the future, predict the future, and even incorporate the changes if we've programmed them well in our system according to the data or the, or as I must say, the truthful data. So when I say truthful data, truthful data is data which is filtered, is processed, is analyzed, and then put into a system or a model that kind of uses it to give us uh, forecasts and predictions. So I think uh, I was clear on the definition of digital twin on the first day and how they're different from simulations and et cetera. So uh, coming into the real life examples of digital twins, we've got a couple of examples and a couple of industries that digital twins have already been shared in or incorporated in. Uh, coming for those examples, we've got uh, one big example in real estate, which is 51 World. So 51 World is a company that kind of brings digital twins into real estate. Uh, we all know how traditional real estate works. So traditional real estate works on a bunch of agents just showing their portfolio and not inculcating any dynamic changes. Whereas 51 World provides us the option to customize your uh to customize the place that you're trying to buy, customize the layout of the city, customize the landscape of the city, helping us in decongest the cities as to check how many people are get would be living in so we could. Uh, transform the transportation services or public services accordingly. So it, 51 World is a really good example. And we've got different companies which are already being partnered with them. Uh, you could basically create a virtual, a 3D world where you could basically have diagnostics, analysis, predictions, and everything from that sort. You could check the robustness of the apartment you might be living in. You could basically customize your apartment and see how the cost uh, would be changing, how the electricity bills would be amped up or coming down, etc. You could even uh, place different objects or furniture in different layouts and see how, how it will look like uh, before you go in and actually buy the whole stuff. So I think 51 World is a great example as to how digital twins have been incorporated in the real estate kind of domain. Then we've got DHL, a very big logistics partner, a worldwide logistics partner, which have also incorporated digital twins. So as I was on the topic as to how logistics was kind of changed due to digital twins, we've got DHL, a worldwide logistics provider using digital twins. So you could basically manage your uh, supply chains and conveyor belts as to see how the luggage or how different goods might be coming in and how you could incorporate them into uh, adversaries so such as weather changes or changes in environment might affect your logistics 
So DHL is a really good example as to how digital twins uh, could affect supply chain. So you've got different services that are traditional to supply chain, such as trains, vessels, ports, trucks, airports, airplanes, shipment, container, warehouses. Uh, there was a, the, we also kind of dwelled upon how NVIDIA mapped a whole warehouse uh, in which they kind of mapped as to how the products might be moving from one place to another and how digital twins could actually make an impact on that. Uh, so I think our logistics and the future of logistics would be drastically changed by the advent of digital twins into them. Then we've got Siemens, another big company, incorporating digital twins as well. And uh, just as I said, the data needs to be truthful. We need real-time data. We just don't need data. It needs to be real-time and it needs to be accurate. It needs to be analyzed. It needs to be processed. So you could also simulate uh, stuff like, uh, I'd say, uh, take example of the aircraft industry. You'd be having people who'd be trained on this virtual environment using digital twins just to reduce errors and uh, fatalities rate, fatality rate, uh, my bad, uh, in the industry. Then a very popular Indian company, TCS, backed by Tata, is also trying to mirror uh, the brain and basically a planet economy as to simulate how a human brain might work in different economies. We've got a uh, couple other examples to which uh, I might not show because it would just prolong the video that there was a company which was using digital twins to map human brains as to how they could procure new flavors of their drinks and how people would react. So you kind of have a prediction as to how your product might do in the market. So you have a choice as to whether you might bring that product to the market and incur losses, or you might tweak the product and make some changes so you have the optimal profits in your industry. Uh, there are a lot more examples as to how digital twins could help, but I feel like digital twin is also a resource intensive thing. So only bigger companies who could afford it might be able to make profit off of it. And at the end of the day, it's using data, which is, Data is like modern day's gold. So not everybody possesses that gold and smaller businesses or smaller MSMEs might not be able to cope up with it and would be derailed off of the economy. Apart from that, Digital Twin is quite uh, computer, uh, quite resource intensive in terms of computing power. So you might need bigger computers, bigger GPUs, which, which may need bigger uh, units of electricity and more power. So we need to be kind of sustainable in that area as well. And apart from that, in totality or in conclusion, I might say that digital twins could really shape our life if we use it sustainably. And we have a good cost uh, profit analysis as to how this might impact a particular business that we might be using it for. So yeah, that's it.